Welcome, hoteliers. Today, we are joined by one of my mentors, friends, and hugely respected hospitality professional, Puneet Mahendru. Puneet is the managing director for Hotel Evade and the founder and CEO of Rev Mantra, a performance marketing consulting company um, that recently launched a COVID-19 hotel playbook. You'll find the link to that right after this, right at the end of this video. Puneet has over 20 years of experience in hospitality covering multiple disciplines, everything from revenue optimization, he's a restaurateur now, and a managing consultant based here in Singapore. Thanks, Puneet, for joining us today. Thanks, Suneet, for having me on this uh, video. And uh, it's, again, great collaborating with Revenate. Uh, we've shared some extensive collaborations in the recent past that have been fun, informative, and uh, educational for me personally. So uh, thank you once again for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to play tag game with you. All right. So let's get right to it. Um, I recently read your blog post about COVID-19, the lessons learned by small business owner. And you make some very interesting points there, particularly around responding to rapidly changing business environment. Tell me a little bit about what was your reaction when you first realized that COVID-19 was going to have such a huge impact on your business? Well, you know, it's uh, natural that uh, such uh, uncertainty kind of breeds uh, fear, anxiety and panic. After all, we are all human. Uh, so my own personal reaction was uh, no different than uh, I'm sure many other people. But years of uh, mountaineering has taught me some very key valuable lessons that are equally applicable to all aspects of uh, life, including business. And uh, one lesson that I never forget uh, in such times is fear is okay, but complacency will kill you. So the best approach is to kind of transform that fear and stress as a motivation to take action and act fast. Uh, so you're able to channel all your stress, uh, which is negative, into something really positive. That's amazing to hear. I think it's important that we control our emotions and keep a semblance of rationality when we're dealing with uncertainty. Um, you make some very interesting points in that article, especially around pivoting your business to leverage the core capabilities and competencies of the business. My question is more around how do you identify the tools that you might need um, for to keep your you know, your, your business, the speakeasy bar, the old man uh, going? Like, how did you identify what you could do to pivot the business? So we had been watching the events unfold across uh, different parts of the world. And to us, it uh, really seemed like a matter of time before they hit Singapore. And uh, this was a great insight into what could be anticipated. We were learning from uh, the different events and activities taking place across the world and garment actions. So way before the circuit breaker, uh, we actually list down a number of scenarios uh, that could have a financial implication on our business at the Old Man Singapore. And, uh, you know, fortunately, years of experience in performance marketing helped me kind of do some water analysis and think about and contemplate with the team some plans of action. The only thing we could keep constant throughout all the scenarios was that we were not going to lose a single of our team members. It's taken a long time to train them, to nurture them. They're like our family. So we didn't want to lose any one of them. So in our financial modeling, we kept that as a constant. Uh, and like they say, necessity is the mother of all innovation for us. This was way more. It was uh, a, a, for a small business, uh, such economic shocks are not just necessarily about uh, you know, sustainability of uh, a particular couple of months, but it's about your survival because you don't have access to those kind of resources. So in, the, in, in kind of approaching this, we narrowed down into three areas, uh, which we thought had a lot of uh, muscle. And let's say it was a hypothesis. One was take away home delivery cocktails. No one was doing it really. There were some bottle cocktails which were in vogue, but uh, no one was really doing takeaway delivery cocktails. Um, memorabilia, the old man t-shirt that I'm wearing right now uh, is much thought after. We never thought we will have to merchandise it, but we do that. And, and, and also we tied up with a uh, <clears throat> couple of 
uh, associated businesses like bar tools. So uh, we looked at Birdie Bar Tool, which is the best selection out of Japan. Uh, they're super popular. And uh, our aim was to get some kind of a sole distribution ship so we could have some ancillary revenue. Uh, once we had done that and narrowed down, uh, we kind of identified the infrastructure and partnerships that would support uh, this initiative and also helped us kind of talk to those partners and revalidate various aspects, um, the kind of infrastructure requirements, as well as regulatory requirements. That, that's very important in our business because they tend to change and there are different licenses which are involved. Uh, so one needs to be mindful of that. Uh, but once that was all sorted, there was just no time to waste. We just ran uh, with the next steps as if our life depended on it. And in less than 72 hours, we published a new brand website. We did it ourselves because we didn't have money to spend on agencies. We wanted to conserve our cash flow for other activities that we prioritize. And in subsequent 48 hours, we had launched our test digital marketing campaign. Uh, to really understand how the model works and derive some learnings out of it. And guess what? To our uh, fortune, uh, you know, while our revenue is still down by 80%, uh, we've been able to do fairly well to survive. Uh, we have a conversion of 3.2% on our online uh, store, which is, I think, better than any retail store, which is generally around one8 to 2%. And uh, to be honest, we have to be thankful to the Singapore government for the grants and the support that have been extended to our industry. So we are able to hold on as an outcome of that. That's brilliant. From what it sounds like, you were able to take the core competencies, look at some of the adjacent uh, areas and then leverage those things to try and bring in some of these ancillary revenues to rethink about what the core um, a revenue model, if you think of it, of your business is, which I thought was very, very interesting. And I think hoteliers have some opportunities in that area. So on to my next question, and this is really where we kind of tie everything back together. So uh, what advice would you have as a managing, consul as a managing uh, consultant for your company, as well as being a managing director for Hotelivate? Uh, what is the kind of advice that you would give independent and boutique hoteliers around pivoting their business? Wow, <laughs> there's been such a steep learning curve that perhaps I could talk about it all day. Um, so to make it simpler for uh, fellow uh, colleagues in the industry, uh, I kind of sum summarize it under 10 points or 10 lessons I've learned and my colleagues have learned uh, working through this. Uh, the first one, as I said, you know, fear is okay, but complacency is kill you. There's no um, time for complacency. You have to take action and you have to be positive when you're taking those actions. You can't just um, mull around the fact that things are really bad. Uh, you have that moment, but you get over it quickly and you move on. Move on. Anticipating the future, I think, and establishing a clear point of view is very critical. Uh, you need to have a clear understanding of what's going on, what's likely to happen, and then establish some assumptions with which you need to work, uh, work on. And then once you've done that, there is just no time to waste. You need to execute with extreme speed, agility and nimbleness because going fast to the market, testing the model, making changes and getting out there in front of the customer is really critical, especially when the entire concept of cocktail uh, business has changed in this uh, scenario. I think one more important thing was we communicated very transparently, whether it was our own team or it were our stakeholders or partners. Uh, we uh, ensured that we kept them engaged at all times. We were very honest, clear, and transparent in our communication, and that helped a lot because that helped them bring, uh, get them on board with what we were attempting to do and also solicit their support. And in doing so, what you realize is that great leadership is actually not about uh, leading people all the time. It's also about being led. You tend to forget you have hired subject matter experts, the guys who have also worked in the industry for 10, 12 years. And while all of this is new to us, but they do have experience. And sometimes you, can, you really need to lean on each other uh, to be really successful. And, and, and um, when you do that, 
you also realize another thing that it's okay to ask for help and say you need help. A lot many times we kind of end up contemplating do I ask him for help? What are they going to think? And so on. We were blatantly ashamed about, <laughs> ashamedly just, you know, approached our partners and said, hey, we can't pay you this month. We have to defer it to next month. And, you know, explained why and uh, what is the aspect because, um, uh, you know, uh, you're not alone. Uh, you have to understand we are all in it together. And this is really the time to collaborate with everyone in a positive manner. And that's why, you know, I have a couple of other restaurants I'm invested in. And along with them, we started something called Dine-In Movement, which has uh, uh, become fairly popular. Even last night, someone messaged me and they said they're really enjoying uh, having all the restaurants uh, selections under one single platform where they can book direct uh, and order direct. So they really like that. Uh, and even once you've implemented all of this, there's no time to rest, really. Um, you know, uh, I barely sleep. I, uh, uh, I've been keeping myself fit, but I've been working more and making less money. So something's got to be wrong with that equation. But uh, doing nothing is not really acceptable. Uh, you have to test, measure, learn and improvise. And especially with, uh, you know, things changing so fluidly every morning. The first thing I do and I just don't even question something has changed. I just know something would have changed. And I say, OK, what are we going to do about it? So our entire mindset has, uh, you know, also adapted to the changing circumstances. Uh, but I think one thing uh, which uh, was a great uh, reckoning for us is that <clears throat> in times like this, you know, everyone wants to make a lot more money or as much money as you can. But these are also moments that define you as a business. Uh, it defines your social responsibility. So, yes, there were opportunities to make some more money. And, um, you know, by uh, uh, navigating through different rules and so on. But, uh, you know, we've chosen to uh, prioritize the safety, security and health of our team, firstly, our customers and ourselves, too. Uh, so we've had to keep that in mind that we uh, ensure that we demonstrate and exhibit a great social citizenship uh, during such crisis. And uh, last but not the least, we are absolutely, absolutely uh, overwhelmed with the support of our partners, our investors, our uh, colleagues in the industry, our suppliers, and, and most importantly, you know, friends of the old man, Singapore, and our customers. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's very easy to forget after all this is over. So we have ensured we are keeping track of a list of all such uh, generosities and support uh, you know people have shown towards us and uh, when the timing is right uh, we definitely want to get back to all of them all of them individually and be able to say thank you and uh, show a, a, a token of our appreciation uh, for the support they uh, kind of extended to us uh, during such a challenging time that was one of the best answers I've ever heard, Puneet. I've I've noticed the, the focus that you've had all along on the people there. Uh, last night when I ordered a, a couple of cocktails from the old man, it came in with your handwritten notes. So we really appreciate. And as a consumer, you feel nice about it. So um, thank you so much for everything that you're doing and being so generous with sharing your insights with the broader hotel community. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sunit. And uh, stay, stay fit. Stay safe and uh, uh, best of luck.